Since my last Spectre merchandise video two months ago, a lot of new products have been made available through online retailers. Click this link to watch the first complete guide. In this video, I'll be detailing any changes and new additions. The ever-present Carter Monday cards were mentioned in the previous video, but they are now available to buy. Since getting the Bond license all the way back in 2001, they have released many different card sets and taken full advantage. They are once again releasing a set based on the new film, but what I thought was provisional artwork has become the final thing unfortunately. No thought appears to have gone into the box design at all. The movie poster playing cards have also been released, again with uninspired box design. They appear to have done away with the QR codes on the reverse, which were evident in the announcement documentation. There's no sign at the moment of the update to the poker chip set. Sticking with the playing cards theme, Top Trumps have also released another version of their card game, the fifth set I believe. The branding for this is very odd as well, with just the gun barrel and 007 logo featured. Black seems to be the in colour for Bond merchandise this year. It would appear Odeon were giving away a special edition Oberhauser Top Trumps card at their cinemas. They are available to buy through eBay. Roger Moore has re-released his Bond on Bond book in paperback format. The book was originally released in hardback in 2012 to coincide with the release of Skyfall. The updated version has some more mentions of Skyfall and includes the briefest of details regarding Spectre. The Best of Bond James Bond CD has also been re-released. If you bought this in 2012, don't waste your time, it's the exact same CD. And just like in 2012, they've even removed Skyfall from the Golden Girl image because they obviously don't have the rights to release Skyfall as part of a compilation of Bond themes, which is a shame. It looks like the same may be the case for Writings on the Wall, as this is also absent. Talking of Writings on the Wall, I mentioned the CD single in my previous video, but the 7-inch vinyl is also available to buy. I mentioned the Belvedere and Scalectric Spectre tie-ins, but the film's other advertising partners have also released tie-in products. Gillette has gone all out. They've released their Fusion Pro Glide Flexible Razor in a presentation box, with a set of razors and slapped a Spectre logo on it. Job done. Some sort of engraving on the razor itself would have been nice. If you're feeling a bit more flush, with a spare £120, and if you don't fancy the Scalectric set, why not treat yourself to a limited edition bottle of Bollinger instead? CNIT and Monopoly have already got in on the Bond collectible scene, so it's now the turn of Trivial Pursuit. No immediate links to Spectre, apart from the standard black colour and obvious timing of its release, but I imagine a few Spectre-themed questions will feature. Once the novelty of beating all of your family and friends with your superior Bond knowledge has worn off this Christmas, one round is all it'll take normally, why not while away the hours avoiding them by completing a Bond jigsaw or two? Of all the iconic Bond scenes they could have gone for, Ravensburger have produced a 500-piece jigsaw featuring six Bond posters. For a bigger challenge, a Spectre-themed 1,000-piece edition is also available. I've covered the light and sound Toy State cars in previous videos and mentioned the DB10 edition to their series. However, it looks like it may finally be available to buy in the UK, or at least one version. Three editions appear to be planned. The 007 version with the lights and sounds, the small remote controlled MI6 version released under the Nico name, and the larger remote controlled top secret version. The cars appear to have had a packaging update as well. As for the Hot Wheels and Corgi editions, no further details are currently available. I'll detail these in a future video when I know more. To add to the endless books mentioned in the previous video, there is yet another Fleming Spectre trilogy collection. The comic strips were released in omnibus format, as were Fleming's three novels in a single paperback. However, Vintage have also re-released a slipcase featuring the three individual novels as well. The books are the harder-to-come-by Man in an Isolated Location photo editions, as opposed to the more simplistic and arty, more available versions. They aren't available through Amazon, but I managed to get the set through the works in the UK. It's early days yet, but Amazon and other retailers have now started to list the Spectre DVD and Blu-ray. I hope they leave the artwork as it is for the standard versions of the films. No release date yet, 
but Skyfall released on Friday the 13th of February last year in the UK, coinciding with Half Term Week. If they stick with a similar release date this year, seeing as the film was released in cinemas on the same day as Skyfall, we can expect the DVD to hit shelves on February the 12th. A limited edition steelbook has been listed on Amazon as well. I hope the artwork for this one does change before release, else it'll be as uninspired as the playing cards design. Something along the lines of the opening title steelbook releases would be nice. The inside of the steelbook appears to match that of the most recent releases, so we can hope. All that's left now is to detail the new additions added to the 007 shop. Most of these are exclusive to the online shop, and the items and postage can be pricey, but some of these might make ideal gifts for a Bond fan at Christmas. First off, one big apparent hole in the Bond merchandise available was a replica of the Spectre ring. Well, that gap has now been filled, the ring now being listed. However, it's not cheap, priced at £145. It does come in a nice presentation box, and is cast in silver, but it's not the most affordable gift, and has put me off buying it. An eBay seller is listing an almost perfect replica, priced at much better £17.90. It doesn't come in a presentation box, and is definitely not sanctioned by Ion Productions, but if you want a version of the ring that doesn't cost a fortune, look no further. There are more available on eBay, but they do look pretty crap, and look nothing like the on-screen version. Some more affordable collectibles from the site include DB10 and Jaguar CX75 keyrings, delivered in a nice presentation box. These are priced at £13 each. A Spectre notebook is available for £10, with the logo embossed on the front, and pages watermarked throughout. There's a Spectre cap, an umbrella, both priced at £10, ballpoint pen for a fiver, and polo shirt for £12. On the technology side of things, there's a super stylish Spectre USB, which is half metal and half glass. The glass half lights up, illuminating the laser etched logo. It's priced at £15. It's only 8GB in capacity, so it's not the most affordable storage, but who's buying it for that anyway? There's a portable power bank with three connectors, lightning, 30 pin and micro USB for 20 quid, and a portable Bluetooth speaker for a more pricey 30 pounds. If you've got a bit more money to throw around, there's a laptop bag with a small Spectre logo stitched in for 35 pounds, and a leather globe-trotted journal for a not quite so affordable 105 pounds. The paper must be gold-plated or something at that price. And that's it, I think. Do let me know if I've missed anything. I'll do another update as more things come to light. Apologies if this video has cost you lots of money, but if it's any consolation, I'm about to go and spend a small fortune on the 007 shop website. Until next time, thanks for watching.